uh, I'm going to put here. Okay. Hi, everyone. Thanks for coming to, to this talk. My name is Javier Aceituno, and I'm working at Atom Track uh, as software engineer. Uh, probably some of you are thinking about what is this talk about with this strange cycle that we have here that is developing in a black hole. Okay, I usually, uh, well, in my, normally when I, when I was coding, I always use the two same tools. In one hand, I use uh, my favorite editor to write, uh, read, and modify the code. And in the other hand, I always use a terminal to execute Django, Django commands, for example, commit changes to GitHub or execute the test of my application. I, I, I make a lot of uh, talks about coding in living session, and I am always receive the same question when I'm writing code. And, this, and the question is, what are the tools that you are using? And the answer is always the same. I use Beam and Tmax. And people say, really? Do you have colors in Beam? Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> Can you split the, a window in different tabs? And he said, yes, yes. For that reason, I have, created that, I, I have prepared this talk to, to, to show you the tools that I use every day for coding and uh, improve my productivity. So let's start with a question. How many of you use BIM here? Oh, yes. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> and how many use Tmax? Right. And HTTPI? OK, perfect, perfect. So that are the tools that I am going to talk to. Short. I, I don't have to put. Here. Okay. That are the, the the tools that I am going to talk here today. So with the start with the start, sorry. With Beam, what is Beam? Beam is a text editor that runs uh, using the command line interface and comes with uh, and also documentation. It's a, you have a huge community behind and it's really extensible, customizable, and portable. Now Beam runs under Macintosh, Windows, and any flavor of, of Unix. So Beam works in four modes, use four modes to, to work. Uh, when you open Beam the first time, when you edit, when you open a file, you open, by default, you open Beam in normal mode that is, used, that is used to navigate. You have also the visual mode to select text, the insert mode to insert new text, and the last one is the command line that is used to execute Beam functions. Here, uh, you can see I'm using Beam to, to, to make the slides, and here you can see some steps, and here the code. I'm going to, to work with the code here. Uh, uh, like any other editor in Beam, you can navigate inside one, one file. But instead of use the mouse and use the arrow keys, you use different keys. You, you use H, J, K, and L. At the beginning, you say, what? Why, why that, that keys? Why you, do you have to use that keys? When you practice with, it, with that keys, uh, you understand that it's, really, that it's really, really powerful because always you, you have your fingers always in the middle of your keyword of your keyboard, sorry, sorry, when you are coding. So this is awesome. For example, we are going to go here. We have a lot of moments, and we can use uh, the forward key. So we can go, imagine that we want to go to the number one. So we, we can press H times the letter W that it uses to go forward. But in BIM, the idea is to press the fewer keys as possible. So here we can use a multiplier. So we can say H times the letter W to go to the, same, to the same number. But also, you can, we can do it better, and we can go directly to the number one, saying go to number one. So you can use these multipliers with, uh, with all the movements, but are you saying that I have to count the numbers? For example, imagine that I here at the bottom of the, of the file. Do you see that I have to count one, two, three, four, five to go here doing that? Yes, you have to count. Or you can configure Beam to say that instead of put the, the lines number, you put it relative number. So imagine that example. Imagine that I'm here and I want to go to the class definition. I see that I have to go up eight steps. So you can say eight up. And imagine that, that you want to go to the fields, you can click on nine, the down. So it's a, you can configure that in your Beam configuration. 
And you can, you can make a lot of movements, like for example, go to the beginning of the file, to the end of the file, go to the end of the current line, and go to the beginning, and a lot of movements. And what about actions? If you want to insert in BIM, you have to click on, you have to press the letter A. Uh, for example, imagine that we want to put here something. You, you click an I, and you write the, the code that you want to do, to do. You can make a lot of actions. For example, here we can insert directly something at the end of the line. You can undo, you can redo. You can change that, that word. You can change, for example, and put M. But my favorite, uh, my favorite uh, action is the repeat your last command that is using the, the key dot. So imagine that we want to put here as M to use it this, library, la, the, this library as M. So to do that, we have to go here and say change word and put an M. After that, you can use the dot key to repeat the action. And what about search? How you can search some string inside the file? Okay, you can use in the back, you can say models, and you find all the models that you have in your, in, your, in your file. You can do it like that, or you can do it in a different way. You can imagine that you are reading the code, and you say, I want to see where I'm, when I, where I'm using models. I can say, what is the string that I have in my current position? And to replace that string, we can say, Imagine that, that we want to do the same example as before. Here we can put a sem. So we have to change the models by, by M. So we can say S, look for models, replace by M, and tell, Bim, tell me if you want to, to change or not. In that case, I don't want to change this one, but I want to change all of these. Now is the time to talk about a different, uh, different mode, the deselection mode. Uh, imagine that I want to put the uh, incident action constant in uppercase. You can select the, the constants, and you can say, oh, this one, you can make an action after that, put it in uppercase. Or imagine that you want to remove it, you can remove it selecting before. And also, we, we can uh, make an action that, it blo that is called block selection. Imagine that we want to put the prefix incidents in all these variables. We can do it with block selection. We can say here incidents, and it's repeated in the four lines. Um, what about uh, how can I work with different with multiple files? Imagine that we want to have different uh, files in the same screen. So here we can use a vertical split like this, and open a new slide. Or we can use a horizontal split, oh sorry. And open a, a new one. This is the way that Beam gives you to, to create different panels. But also you can use a tab to put here a different file. Okay, here I can see a different file. Okay, now we have this one. I'm going to remove it. Okay, we now we, we know how to read the, the code, how we can change it, how we can navigate inside the file, but how can I uh, save the changes that they have? To do that, you have to use uh, the, the beam functions. So imagine that to write the, to write the changes in the, in, the, in the file, you have to write, you have to execute the function write. If you don't have what is the function that you have to use or you don't know, you don't know how to use it, you always can use the help uh, function and put here, I would like to, to know more about the write. Here you go to the, to the documentation, being docu being documentation to see the information about that, that command. And this is, uh, in BIM, you can install different plugins. In, this is uh, the list of the plugins that I'm using, the most re relevant uh, plugins. And the bundle is the plugin manager, but I, I'm using all, all way, uh, also Nettree, Control P, and this one. Let me show you an example. Uh, Nettree, when you do that, 
With Netri, you can list the directories and the files that you have in your work directory. For example, you can go over here and put the file. Uh, all, uh, with Control P, you can directly go to the model that you want. For example, I want to see the models driver, and you can open here the class. And with ACK, you can find uh, you can find an extreme in your code. <laughs> okay, and here you, you see the class that you are looking for. Okay. So now that, that, I, that I know a little more about BIM, it's the time to work with the rest of action that you usually do, or I usually do, that is uh, use a different terminal to create Django migrations, uh, push uh, changes to GitHub, and this kind of things. To do that, you only have to use a terminal. But can I use the same terminal that you are using here to execute Beam? Yes, you can do it. For example, with iTerm, you can create a vertical split. And you have a different terminal to do different stuff. But today, I would like to talk a bit about Tmax. Tmax is a client server terminal multiplexer that lets you switch between several programs in one terminal. To run it, you only have to go to your terminal, install before, OK, <laughs> and execute Tmax. How you can see, I have created a Tmax section with one window, the window number one, and I'm executing the C cell uh, the C cell. So now that we have created a window, we have created a lot of windows. Uh, for example, you can create a new window. You can rename it. For example, here I am going to put my on track project. And you can move uh, between different windows. To do that, you can say, uh, give me the list of windows that you have in that demo session. And you can say, I can go here or here. Or you can directly use the number of the window. You can say, go to window one. I'm going to, to put here the slides. I'm going to remove that terminal. I'm not going to use it more. I'm going to put here. Oh, don't worry, don't worry, yeah. <laughs> OK, windows. But I usually uh, work with windows and panels in the same window. For example, uh, I like to put a beam in one panel. So you can create a panel here. So beam, you can create a vertical panel. Here I always use, uh, I always use uh, Docker to, to run my application. And I create a panel for Docker, a new panel for the cell to execute different Python with the context of your application. I create a new terminal to execute git uh, Django commands, for example. Here you can move and change the size of your, of your windows, of your panel, sorry. And you can move between each panel going to the number two, for example, or going to the number four. But I like to do it like in BIM. I like to move uh, in different panels like in BIM. To do that, you can go to your Tmux configuration file and bind the map, the keys that you use to change between panels. So if I see the, my Temos configuration, here you can see that I change, I, I have bind the, the keys to change between panels. It's really useful because it, it, you are using the same keys for BIM and for Temos. But what happens if you have here a vertical split? I would like to move between splits, uh, between uh, beam panels and Temus panels using the same way, like this. I can move it between, between beam and Temus using the same way. To do that, you have to remember that you have to install a beam Temux navigator plugin. But if I go to my beam configuration, I'm using, pla or sorry, I'm using bundle to, uh, to install my plugins, is this plugin. With this plugin, 
you can change between Tmux and Vim using the same the same the same way. Okay, we have seen the panels. Okay, one more interesting thing is the panels is really small. If you want to maximize, you can maximize the panel. So imagine that we are here, sorry. And we want to see all the trace of our application. We can say maximize. And if you want to recover the previous state, you can say recover the previous state. It's really useful because you can be coding and you see here the trace of your code and you can say, hey, I have a problem or something like that. Sorry. More navigation. Like in BIM, you can navigate inside a, inside a Demux panel and you use the same keys that you use in, in, in BIM. So for example, you can search info and you can move between info words. You can go up with the key K. You can go down and you can select some of your, of your text to copy and paste in a different way, in a different panel, sorry. So let me, let me try to give you an example. I am going to use Postman to execute, a, to, execute, to execute an endpoint in my API. I would like to create a driver. If I send, here we receive a 500 error. That means that we have an error in our application. So to see, we can go to our project and here, maximize and see the trace of your code. The, where is the, the error is here. So you can take that file, copy and paste in your beam to see what is the problem. Oops. Okay, okay I forget the core. Okay, and if we go to the line, I don't know, 89, okay, you can go directly to the number, to the line 89. We forget to put here a parenthesis. If we, have, if we run again, here we can see that everything now it's, it's okay. Now that uh, we know how to move in between different panels, windows, and how to navigate inside that one panel, one awesome feature that, uh, that Timos gives you is the panel synchronization. Imagine that we have uh, in development or in production two different servers, two different machines, uh, with the same structure, of file structure, and you want to uh, edit the same file in different machines at the same time. You can do that with Temux. If we go here, I'm going to rename this panel to sync. And I am going to simulate, because I'm not going to use SSH to connect to a, to a production environment, okay? So I am going, to, <laughs> I am going to, to use it here. I have two directories to replicate. So if you want to write only in one panel and replicate it in the other, you can activate the synchronous, synchronized panels. So if we can be only writing in one panel and replicate it in the other. Indeed, we can edit this, the same file but in different machines at the same time. So imagine that we want to execute BIM and you can say, I'm writing two files at the same time. And here you can put the absolute path of that file. And you see that is in different machines, different directories. Okay, to disable is take care with this command because <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, take care. I, I don't want to say more. Okay. So to deactivate, you have to execute the same, sorry, the same common. Uh, so W, synchronous panels. And now you only write in, in one panel. 
But for me, the, my favorite uh, Tmux feature is the, that gives you the ability to work in pair programming. Pair, or, or a lot of users yeah, editing the same file at the same time. Uh, before, to run Tmux, we have executed Tmux without arguments. When you do that, you are creating a simple session and you are attaching to it. But we can do it in two steps. So we are going to simulate again that behavior and imagine that we list, okay, uh, history is your friend. So I am going to, I always use history. So if you see that magic letters appear, is is the history. Okay? Uh, you can, here you can see that I have, we have four, four windows. We can create a named session with minus s and in the touch mode to say that I have created a demo section that is here, that is called pair. So you can connect to it, attach to it. And here, for example, I can open example by, I don't know, I want to remove that. I am going to put Euro Python here. One of your colleagues, teammates, can connect to the same session that you are using. So if I go here to the machine two that is a different user, okay, imagine that is the user two, you can list the session that you are using here, that you have in your in your machine, and you and you see that you have the same the same pair session. So you can attach to it using the same way, and you see the, the same file because you are sharing that connection, and this user can modify this. And user two can say, no, 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 I don't, I don't like it. So it's, it's better to if you, if you use communication here. <laughs> okay. If you remove, okay, I should exit from there. Okay, now that we have all our environment in only one terminal, your editor uh, and all, all, all that you need, I would like to don't have to go here to Postman and execute a request using Postman. I would like to use some tool in a terminal to do a request. And I think that all of you knows a curl. So imagine that we want to work with our API and we want to, to use this little panel. I'm going to, to maximize. Uh, we can to iterate with, uh, with interact, to interact with our API First, we have to create uh, an access token. So using core, okay, here, I'm creating the access token for the user Aero Python with the password 2018. If I execute this, awesome works. Okay, here we have the access token that we need to, for example, execute the route that we have open for Spain. So if I go here, take the access token, I can use it to get, okay, I can go and say, hey, I want to use <laughs> this access token to get the route for the country of Spain. Okay, and here I return the, the body. Okay, awesome, but I have to read, to write a lot. And it's not for humans because uh, you have a string and you don't see anything. Instead of, for that reason, uh, HTTP was born to resolve that problem because HTTP, HTTP uh, is designed for humans. So let's go to transform this core uh, request to HTTP request. I'm going to go to Beam to edit. So the first thing that we have to do is instead of use core, we have to use the HTTP uh, command. And we, have, and we say make a post and uh, HTTP has been built to work with JSON APIs so you can remove the JSON headers that you need because by default, accept and content type is always application JSON. Okay, you can remove it. And to send the body, instead of send an string, you can send simple 
arguments. So in that, in that case, we can say password. And in this, in, that, in this case, it's the same. The first thing that you notice is that we receive a, a beautiful JSON with highlighting and everything. So you can take it, this one, in, and we can, we can do the same for the next core. That is get this one, we can change it, and we can say HTTP. We can remove HTTP, the schema, and the host, because by default is HTTP and localhost and it's better. To put the get parameters, you have to use two equals, and like before, we can remove the JSON headers. Uh, but what happened with the, oops. <laughs> okay. But what happened with the rest of the headers? Okay, you can send it like that, like this. Uh, you don't need, ah, yeah, thank you. We execute it receive the body in a JSON format. But we can do it better because we can use something that is called sessions. So if you use a session, for example, AeroPython, you can save the headers of that, of that request for the next one. So the next time that you execute again, you can remove this token. Okay? So, that's all about, about HTTP. And to finish with the talk, I would like to give you some resources that I use to learn these, these technologies. That is uh, three books. The first two is for BIM, learning, learning the B and BIM editors. Uh, gives you the basics of BIM. And Practical BIM gives you a lot of uh, tips to work with BIM. The last one is to, uh, to gives you a step by step how, how you can use Tmax and how you can configure it. Um, my last conclusion, I'm not here to say you that you have to use BIM. You, have used, you are using BIM, so yeah, okay. I'm here to say you that learn your tools and in, try to integrate to be more productive. So that's all, thank you. Thanks very much. Uh, I guess we've got time for a couple of quick questions, if anyone. In the uh, HTTP example with the session, does it also um, store cookies that the server would send back to you? Uh huh. Yep. And okay. you are using the cookie that you return. Right. right. Cool. Anyone else? You have a file that you you create a file where you store that, and you can change it if you want. So when you navigate the shell with the keys, who is granting that? Is it Tmax or is it the Vim plugin? No. It's uh, when you are navigating, it's Tmax. Okay. But you can configure Tmax with the same keys as you use in Vim. So but is it, it Tmax by default or you have to configure it? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Or is it also part of your shell? Like said uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the slide, you can see my dot files with the configuration. So there you can, you can check if it's by default or not. Uh, I learned recently that there is a new implementation, NeoVim. Um, have you heard of that? Yeah, I heard of that. Indeed. But <laughs> also, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a really good idea. But now with Vim 8, you don't have to use it because uh, he has done the same as NeoVim. So yeah, I, I have heard it, but I'm not using it. I use it and it's awesome. It's awesome, yeah. yeah. So a lot of instruments were using awesome very fast, uh, very fast. Like, you had a bit of a lag there when you do block inserts in the right in the neo game it's like instantaneous. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's the reason. To yeah, yeah, that's the reason. <laughs> More questions? Uh, in order to use those tools, you need to configure them. And in my case, I have a lot of machines, not necessarily all of them on the same network. So what solutions exist to synchronize those configuration files across the machines? I don't, I don't know. Ansible. <laughs> Ansible, OK. <laughs> You can use Ansible. I actually have one more question, <laughs> maybe to everybody, because um, 
I, I switched to a different keyboard layout and that is quite a problem because uh, a lot of default shortcuts, uh, especially in something like Vim, they, they are arranged in such a way that they work well with QWERTY. Yeah. And with a different layout, I would basically have to reconfigure everything or learn everything differently. Is there any idea how to improve that? I have the same problem with the Spanish keyboard. Uh, <laughs> in the end, I, I'm using a Spanish keyboard, but with the, U, uh, with the UK layout. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> cool. Uh, we just have one last quick question. Did someone have a question back here? Yeah, it's not a question, so if you want a legit question. Okay, let's have a legit question. Sorry. So the talk, the talk had JQ in the title. I realize if you cut it for time, just like a, a sentence what this is about. Uh, sorry, I don't, I don't understand. The, the you talk really. title had JQ in it, so it was a CD by and JQ. Yeah, I don't have time to prepare yeah, yeah, it. If you can, just one sentence, but it is not demo either or anything. Okay, now what's how we can see? There's a coffee break now, so we can have a longer discussion. All right, we'll end that there. And thank again. Okay, speaking. thank you.